just before the film, I would like to talk to you about some of the new phases in our national youth outreach program. We have just completed our first edition of four new tracks, beautifully printed in two color, here in our own plant in Joplin, Missouri. These tracks not only have an eye appeal, they have a message directed to the heart of youth. The tracks are as follows. Youth with a sense of urgency. Whose fool are you? Life with a capital L. The lie of the serpent. I would like to mention two other items in our new supplies. A book written by one of the instructors from Southern Bible College entitled, It's Great to Be Young. This is written by Lewis Caldwell. Every young person should read this book. It's great to be young. Then we would also like to mention our new long play record album that was recorded at National Youth Conference in the beautiful Rocky Mountain Camp. It features the inspiring gospel singing of Pentecostal youth from across the nation. You may order these supplies from our national office, Post Office Box 705 in Joplin, Missouri. The film that you're about to see is another phase in our youth outreach program, a program that is dedicated to reaching youth with the truth. This is not a pretty picture. Drug addiction never is. But it is our prayer that this film will challenge you to the urgency of reaching the youth of America with the gospel of Christ before sin takes its deadly toll. And now for the film, Narcosis. This quiet tree-lined street is hardly a typical setting for a story of drug addiction. But it could have started here, in an attractive home where somehow something went wrong. Here on the living room rug, a young man is processing bits of the dried leaves of a common weed. A weed which has been called the stepping stone to drug addiction. Botanists call it cannabis sativa. Millions know it as marijuana or by a variety of other names such as tea, hay, weed or pod. This will be made into cigarettes. It doesn't look like tobacco, it doesn't taste like tobacco. Some say the odor of its smoke reminds them of silage or newly mown alfalfa. Marijuana smokers claim the drug has no control over them, that it just makes them feel high. Actually, it's something more than an intoxicant. Under the influence of marijuana, stripped of his inhibitions, the user is so susceptible to suggestion he may be easily led into criminal acts. Marijuana has no legitimate medical usage. Long ago, authorities recognized its dangers and declared it illicit. Sticks or joints of marijuana are rolled in white or brown paper. The ends are tucked in to prevent loss of content. Easily identified, they are just as easily avoided. The first one is usually smoked because of a dare or just out of curiosity, so often with tragic results.
typically the marijuana smoker wants company. He encourages others in the habit and seeks their companionship when under the drug's influence. If his supply is adequate, the confirmed user will peddle some of the weed to finance additional purchases. Any way you look at it, the cost is high. Dollars spent for a few cigarettes may be multiplied many times if we consider the end result. who hasn't used narcotics may never know the wisdom of a refusal to join the party. Those intoxicated with marijuana experience pronounced emotional responses to sound and rhythm. The non-user may be bewildered by these strange reactions often disgusted by the apparent lack of control. Unexplained laughter is a common occurrence at a tea party. The drug's subtle and profound effect upon the mind starts many an innocent person on the road to drug addiction. Actually, there are three major prerequisites to drug use. A desire for the effects or willingness to experiment. Access to the drug. And an ignorance or disregard of the harmful effects of the drug. It is while in the state of susceptibility brought on by marijuana intoxication that most users take their first shot of heroin. Often, that first shot is free. The vent spoon, the eyedropper, and the hypodermic needle, crude equipment at best and never sterilized, are the heroin addict's outfit.
This is his first and probably his last free shot of heroin. passes, physical tolerance to the drug increases. On the road to drug addiction, there is a steady rise in the cost of maintaining the drug habit. At first, he may get by on $10 a day, but tolerance increases rapidly. The body cries out for relief, which only the drug or proper treatment can supply. Before long, the addict needs far more money than he can legitimately earn. He must resort to crime to get money to buy drugs. Favorites of the addict criminal are petty thievery, confidence games, stealing from cars, and shoplifting. But stolen goods bring only a small portion of their retail value. So, if he ever manages to get ahead of the game, he becomes a heroin peddler, reaping profits on the misery of others. Following a usual pattern, the addict has turned his girlfriend to addiction and prostitution. Arrested by police, faced with the full realization of her crimes, she furnishes a detailed account of her boyfriend's dope peddling activities. Until this moment, he had thought only of himself. But the suffering and sorrow of drug addiction is not limited to the user. His mother and family must also bear the grief of its inevitable result. Taken against his will from his miserable existence, the addict has the opportunity to undergo treatment which will rid him of his physical dependence upon drugs. If he wants to be cured, this is his chance. The decision is in his hands. This is the temporary home of an addict who's had lots of chances to make that decision. If you can believe it, this is his choice. Wanted for petty theft and bunco, he's afraid to be seen on the streets. A peddler has agreed to deliver heroin to his room, but peddlers are unreliable. He may be late, maybe he won't even show. It would be tough for the addict to leave his bed without a shot of heroin. He's overdue now and getting the first symptoms of dreaded withdrawal. Running of the nose, sneezing, excessive yawning. His body is scarred and marked from years of puncturing his veins with dirty needles, ulcerated by the poison drug. Now the perspiration and tears of the early stages of withdrawal. Cold chills force the addict to put on more clothes and crawl back into bed. Sneezing becomes more violent. Cramps in the arms and other muscles bring on restlessness. Hot and cold flashes contribute to his misery. Violent muscular cramps bring intense pain and heavy perspiration.
Withdrawal is climaxed by violent seizures and vomiting. Internal hemorrhaging often brings up blood. Unconsciousness may bring temporary relief from the suffering. If the addict receives no drugs, these symptoms will recur periodically for 72 hours or longer. The arrival of the peddler between violent attacks of withdrawal gives temporary strength to the sick addict. Dope peddlers are cold and heartless. He wants the exact price before making the delivery. The same crude, dirty implements will be used again. follows the hype's old ritual of preparing the white crystalline powder. The drug is dissolved in water, heated in the spoon. Dirty cotton from the tongue of his shoe is used in a ridiculous effort to filter impurities out of the poison he is about to inject. the tie rag. Anticipation steadies his hands as he looks over his ulcerated veins for a place to inject the needle.
And now it's done. The pain is leaving. After all this misery and suffering, what effect does a shot of heroin have? He wants to wash his face and comb his hair. He feels almost like a normal human being. These abscesses were caused by skin shock. After an addict has suffered intense withdrawal symptoms, he may feel the need of a second injection. Any available means will be used to get the drug into his system. If he doesn't have a hypodermic needle, he'll use a safety pin. This is the life of an addict. On the nod, suffering withdrawal, scrounging for drugs, months in jails or institutions, and then back again. Every addict has his choice. A chance for a new life when he has been treated and cured, or a return to the haunted oblivion of drugs. The decision is in his hands. This was not a Hollywood production. It was not meant to be. This was the actual pictures of showing one who had been duped by the devil. It is our desire that this film has challenged the life of every young person to realize the enemy is out to destroy your life. Recently an article came across my desk that declared communism is planning to entice one million new teenage drug addicts in 1962. What we do for Christ must do we done quickly.